Today on Zola Levitt Presents. We want the message of Christianity through Jewish eyes and the relevance of the state of Israel. We want it to go to the next generation. It's a passion for us. We have children in college, one just graduated. It's so exciting for us to see kids understanding the importance of Israel, the importance of their Jewish heritage. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a lamp that burns. Zion forever. Hello and welcome to our program. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss. And welcome to our series, Zion Forever. We're taking you to the City of David and the Temple Mount. Two very important places. They are contested. They're real estate. You know, the, here in the real estate business, location, location, location. Well, this is the, the epicenter. Holy of holy of yeah. holies. <laughs> this is the epicenter of all the conflict that is pointing towards Jerusalem. Mm. Because the Temple Mount is where the temple stood. It is Hamakom, the place mm -hmm. where the Western Wall is, the closest we can get to that. And the city of David establishes the historical truth of King David. Absolutely. It's amazing to go see what God is unearthing in these days. You know, it says in Psalms 48, verse 13, walk about Zion mm. that you might tell it to the generations that following that our God is their God forever, even until the end. Wow. You know, that's so important to us. We have grown men now, but they're 24 and 21 when we're shooting this, and they uh, need to know, their generation needs to know the importance mm -hmm. of the realities of what's going on in Israel and the Middle East. And so these programs are part of that. It's really a, a fulfillment of what God calls us to way back in Deuteronomy, Lador Vador, from generation to generation. Yes. I think that's why uh, Yeshua speaking in Luke 19, 40, he said that if he wasn't worshiped, the stones would cry out. Uh -huh. We know that has a spiritual meaning, but the reality is that also right now, the very stones of Israel are crying out, speaking the truth about this book Amen. and about God. And so we're excited to take you now to Shahar Shiloh. He's a historian and one of the guides at the city of David. Let's hear from him now. Shahar, thank you for being with us. We're standing here between the Temple Mount and the City of David, on the City of David. Tell us some of the newest findings that you've been part of, that you know about here regarding the Temple Mount. Well, down at the Temple Mount, the place which is the Bible calls the Ophel. Ophel comes from a steep way up, which yes. is exactly a steep way up from the Kidron Valley to the Temple Mount itself. Yes. Dr. Elat Mazar has been excavating right behind my back right now. She's on the slopes of the Southern Steps where Jesus entered the Temple. And yes. she knows this site so well because what she dug down there is a Solomonic wall from the walls of King Solomon. Mm -hmm. We need to remember that King David established his city on this hill, yes. which is south of us right now. Yes. At my back comes the enlarging of the city only in the times of Solomon. Yes. So we're looking for Solomon's things. Anything which has to do with the Solomonic times yes. should be behind my back right now. Yes. We need to remember that you can only dig as far as the walls themselves because this is a sanctuary of the Muslim world today. No one can dig under Temple Mount itself. So regardless of politics, there have been some amazing finds recently. I read about uh, a medallion and uh, some other gold coins. Tell us about those. Well, she found some really amazing stuff. And regardless of the politics, yes. which are inside the Temple Mount on the slopes, yes. findings are coming all the time, like this huge golden medallion that shows the Jewish menorah yes. and the Jewish shofar, the yes. great horn, yes. and things which has to do with the time of the Byzantine world, which, by the way, Jews have always tried to get to Jerusalem. This one comes from the 6th century AD. Yes. And it shows that the Jews never stopped to dream of Jerusalem. And when they had the ability of coming to Jerusalem with the national symbols, they did. And so she found golden coins and she found huge amounts of lanterns and pottery that dates back from the times of the 10th century BCE. Again, behind my back, wow. all the time to the Byzantine world when Jews were still prevented from coming to Jerusalem. And yet they did as much as they could. 
So our viewers begin with the understanding that Scripture is inerrant. They believe the Bible. And I like to say that the headlines are catching up to the Bible. You're seeing an interface uh, phenomenal. Well, I, I have to say, I have to be frankly here, as, as a scholar, but as a secular person, yes. I very much believe in the Bible. I have no doubts about the existence of the story of the Bible. Mm -hmm. No doubts whatsoever, because whatever I see, historical documents Verified. proving things outside the Bible. Mm -hmm. The biblical story is being supported by two different academic lines. One of them is history, which mm -hmm. is documents, mm -hmm. and the other one is archaeology, which stands for its own, but then it needs to be interpreted. Yes. And we interpret it whatever we find. So if it goes along with documents, yes. then we say bingo, no yeah. doubts are whatsoever. So if you have the book of Jeremiah being proved here with many, many chapters, if you've got things coming out from the time of Abraham, time of patriarchs, we are talking about a great astonishing to the world today. And as we move forward, yes. I expect many of the other stories to be proved as well. It's, it's quite easy as things are keeping, you know, popping out from the ground in the city of David. We were here several years ago and one of our passengers on a tour found a Maccabean coin at the, at the uh, sifting project. Tell us about the sifting project. Our viewers would love to well, hear about the it. The sifting project, I should say, is, is a privilege because for many, many years, the Temple Mount itself as a sanctuary was forbidden to dig underneath. Yes. So no one could actually excavate it. Mm -hmm. Because of a different reason that took place for a, a, a whole different idea, they wanted to do, the Muslims on the Temple Mount wanted to do an enlarging of one of the mosques for the summertime, for the Ramadan especially. Mm -hmm. So they had to dig underneath us, right there, which a place which is called Solomon's Tables today. Yes. For a mistaken history item, it doesn't exist as a Solomon's Tables. Ah. It was built by King Herod. The whole structure behind ourselves right now, behind myself right now, is a Herodian huge thing. But it was under the great arches they dug in order to take out the soil so they can actually put it and establish a new mosque underground. Yes. I'm talking about a few thousands of tons of soil yes. and rubble that came out from there. Yep. They were thrown into the Kidron Valley, mm -hmm. which from there we have taken it into a sifting project that exists right now for about almost 10 years. And the great amount of findings, over 50,000 findings from the history of the Temple Mount keeps on appearing. We have stuff there which is Egyptian, 14th century BCE, that goes along with the letters being sent from Jerusalem to Egypt wow. in the 14th century BCE, that is even prior to Joshua. Wow. We have stuff coming out as a high priest impression under the name Imer, appears in Chronicles, First Chronicles chapter 24. Yes. We have biblical names coming out from the Temple Mount. We have huge amounts of coins from the time that coins exist in the world. So it keeps on showing us the existence of ancient knowledge from the times of the history of the Temple Mount. But again, it was just because of a reason that was not there in the first time because we are not allowed to excavate. It was just because of a mistake took place for building reasons. As you can see, these efforts are vital in establishing the true history of the land. We also met with Zahi Devira at the Temple Mount Sifting Project, where he updated us on the recovery of precious artifacts. The project was established on November 2004 and uh, I believe we have about another seven years to finish all this debris. It's a lot of work. And I understand there's still more that we are not allowed to look at yet. Is that true? There is still, still, still more debris on the Temple Mount that they haven't uh, removed yet because of a court uh, uh, ruling that prevents them from uh, just discarding this debris without any controlled archaeological supervision uh, and treatment of this uh, dirt. Oh, so they're afraid that it would be contaminated, but it's actually a political issue, isn't it? Uh, of course it's a political issue. Yeah. Everything uh, in Jerusalem is, is, is political. Uh, and, uh, and of course, if you deal with the Temple Mount. So, uh, and for this reason, they never has be, have been a, an excavation, a, a systematic excavation on the Temple Mount because of the political sensitivity yes. and the uh, objection of the Islamic authorities over there that they don't want any kind of archaeological research at the site. Yes. Tell us about some of the most exciting things you found here. Well, everything is exciting because, yes. because this is the first time that we have archaeological finds that, were, that come from within the Temple Mount. Mm. We have such a large variety of finds uh, from all periods since uh, the first temple period, which is about 15% of the finds, and the second temple period, which is about 40% of the finds, till today.
Our resource on this program, Zion Forever on DVD. For your donation, you'll receive all nine programs which look back into history and forward into prophecy concerning the Temple Mount. From the sacrifice of Isaac to the Jewish Temple till today, you'll see Jewish heritage confirmed by archaeology. Call 1-800-WONDERS and ask for the Zion Forever DVD or visit us at Levitt.com. Your financial contributions to Zolid Levitt Ministries enable us to bring you our weekly television series, our monthly newsletter, and our website. But you may not know your gifts of funds also support other ministries that share the gospel here and in Israel through our To the Jew First Fund, Aiton Shishkoff, our man in Haifa, and the Good News Fund. We welcome your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries as we serve together until our Messiah returns. Israel is a land full of promises. We will never be the same, so we invite you to come. It's a trip of a lifetime. We'd love you to join us. It's so true to see in the Word of God that there's a set time for everything and there's a set time to favor Zion and it is today Good. because it talks about in Psalm 102 that there would be stones that would be arising that mm. would be teaching us mm. of God's supernatural lineage and, and life that he's passed on from generation to generation mm -hmm. and it was a joy to go to the temple sifting project yes. and see the little children finding these treasures and finding these stones and these coins verifying their existence their their life and their family's existence can you imagine a, a country so small that we always say the size of new jersey roughly surrounded by millions of enemies who want you wiped off the face of the earth. And these children are finding out who they are, where they come from, and what the history of the land is for the Jewish people. Uh, it was thrilling for us. We happened to be there when the young people were there as well. And it's so amazing to see these treasures being unearthed. Because let's face it, the political pressure coming from all sides to shut down this kind of a project because it tells the truth about the Jewish people and the land of Israel. Well, let's go to the Temple Mount Sifting Project and hear some more from our guide. You know, it's amazing. I, I like to say on TV that the, the headlines are catching up to the Bible. You are approaching this from a scientific viewpoint, and yet daily the Bible stories are being verified by what you find here. Every day we have our, uh, our historical deadlines. <laughs> uh, not a, a deadline, but also Headline, headlines. Yes. <laughs> headlines. And, uh, and we have, uh, you know, we have the evidence of the destruction of the first temple. We have arrowheads from the destruction that wow. the Babylonians uh, uh, fired on the, on the temple. We have uh, broken or smashed uh, f small figurines, mm. clay figurines, mm -hmm. uh, from terracotta figurines we call them, yes. that, uh, uh, that attest the, the, um, the activity of uh, King uh, uh, Joash. Yes. Who, who said that, that he smashed all the molten images, ah. and and uh, we have many of them, and and uh, also we have arrows from the destruction, and we have lots of burnt material and mm. burnt architectural stones, and we have lots of magnificent, uh, very high level uh, uh, engravements mm. uh, from the time of Herod. Mm. Uh, that some of the stones may have been from the temple itself. We cannot tell because everything here is smashed and it's out of context. Right. But we can tell the date. Mm. We can tell that it comes from, uh, uh, from public buildings, um, very elaborated buildings. And we have a very rare coin, a half a shekel coin from mm. silver. Uh, only three were found in Jerusalem. Wow. And the half shekel, this coin was minted during the Jewish revolt against the Romans. Mm. And it was used to raise funds from the temple. For the temple, as, really? as it says in, in the book of Exodus, that everyone should give half a shekel. Uh -huh. no, no less and no more yes. to the tabernacle. Yes. So also in the second temple period, they used this sum of, of money for raising funds. Interesting. We have uh, more than 1,000 floor tiles in different shapes, geometrical shapes and colors. Wow. Now Josephus tells us that 
in the, sec the, the second temple courts, all the surrounding, uh, uh, all the open courts, all that were open to the sky, were paved with stones of all sorts and all colors. And now we know what he's talking about. Uh -huh. And we it. can reconstruct the patterns, the mm. geometrical patterns. Wow. You know, for, speaking of fundraising, our viewers have been participating with you. By raise, We've raised funds for the Temple Mount uh, sifting project. And so they're interested also in, uh, how many people have come over to help you? How many tourists, visitors, pilgrims come? More than 150,000 people. Have helped you here? Have helped you here. There were, wasn't, you don't, there's no such phenomenon in the archeological research since it began. 150 years ago, mm. that so many people took part yes. in an archaeological research. Even in the um, um, study of the finds, we are using many experts, because this is the characteristics of these finds that are uh, out of context, so you need more expertise to yes. date them and to recognize yes. them. So many people are taking uh, part in this, in, in, in this uh, duty. Mm -hmm. And you know, the book of uh, Psalms has a verse that says exactly, literally, it says, Atatakum terachem tzion ki et lechonena ki va moed ki ratzu avadecha et avanea ve et afara yechonenu. And in English? You will rise and redeem Zion because time has come because thy servant has pleasure it dust uh, 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 because thy servant has pleasure it dust yes. and put gracious to its stone wow so when the servants come together he name when the servants come together and favor the dust of zion god's grace is with them and we we are gracious to to israel and god is gracious as well and now the teacher is assigning them into pairs and they're yes. going to start, each pair will take a, a bucket yes. with a uh, sifted that was already dry sifted but now is soaked with water yeah. uh -huh. and they're going to pour the bucket on the screen yeah. and start washing the material so looking through. and later on, they will, after that, they will start uh, scrutinizing it mm -hmm. carefully to uh, separate all the archaeological finds and the natural stones. Uh -huh. This is a very organized group. <laughs> yeah, the teacher is very organized. Uh, yeah. This is the first time that I see that the teacher is, <laughs> is assigning who will go with whom and pairs. And, <laughs> and uh, she probably has experience because kids get really excited. Yes, and they should. Yeah. They should be excited. It's pretty amazing. So our viewers are very interested in the excitement the children feel. Does it connect them with their Zionist history and the roots? Of course, because they touch in the heart of the Jewish uh, nation. Yes. It's uh, things from Bet Mikdash, yes. the first Bet Mikdash. Yes. And they see things and they touch with the hand. Yes. You can go up there, so right. they touch it. So it's, uh, it's, it's important on very many levels, educationally, but also I think it stirs up their understanding of national history and, and the importance of being a Jew in the land. Yeah. Yes. Of course, because all the time we speak about it in the class. Yes. And now they touch, they see, yes. they feel it. Yes. So this is the reason we are here. And it's very, very important for them yes. and for us. And all the time we only speak, only teach, only tell things. Right. So this is the... Hands-on. Yeah, inside. Wonderful. Yeah. You know, it's so important for our viewers to see the next generation yeah. understanding Israel. Think about what Zola started 30 plus years right. ago, but it's important the kids get this, right. isn't it? Right, right. Well, you, when, you t when you handle the things of the, of the first and second century, I mean, these are like the rocks are literally <laughs> speaking to these people about their history, their yes. heritage, and the, and the temple that was here. It's exactly. so exciting to see their faces as they find these finds. It's amazing. Yes, it is. You know, it's so important for us, too. We want the message of Christianity through Jewish eyes and the relevance of the state of Israel. We want it to go to the next generation. It's a passion for us. We have children in college, one just graduated. It's so exciting for us to see kids understanding the importance of Israel, the importance of their Jewish heritage. God wants us to see the ancient rocks and meet the living stones. Let's go north and hear from our man in Haifa, Eitan Shishkov. Shalom. I'd like to talk to you today about a very popular figure in scripture, a man named 
Kepha. You probably know him better as Peter. Uh, Peter was located, uh, it was in the middle of the day, around lunchtime, uh, on a roof down the coast from here, uh, at a place called Joppa in those days, Yafo in modern uh, Israel. And uh, Peter was kind of drowsy. And uh, during this uh, time when he was waiting for lunch, uh, suddenly uh, he, he went into a trance. He had a vision, not once but three times. He saw a sheet lowered down from heaven, and, and in this sheet were animals. It's, it's interesting that he was hungry at the time, but the animals were not kosher. They, they were not what he was uh, really permitted to uh, eat, according to the Torah that he followed. And uh, he, was, he was wondering what this vision meant when uh, some people arrived at the gate of the house where he was staying, and interestingly, the people who had come as messengers were sent by a Roman centurion, an officer, not Jewish, a guy named Cornelius. Cornelius had also received a supernatural communication from God that he was to send these men to bring Peter to Caesarea, Caesarea, which is up the coast from Joppa, actually between where we are now, the Haifa Bay and Jaffa, or Yafo, in Caesarea. And... Uh, and he was going to receive Peter and hear what he had to say. So here's Peter. He comes down from the roof. He meets these messengers. The messengers say, hey, uh, our boss wants you to come up to, uh, to Caesarea and, uh, and talk to him. Peter goes, okay. Next day, he heads to Caesarea. He finds himself in the house of the Gentile Cornelius. And they're ready to hear whatever he has to say. Cornelius has gathered his friends, his neighbors, his relatives. And Peter gives them the good news about Yeshua having been sacrificed as the perfect lamb, the son of God, the Messiah of Israel, and rising from the dead. Well, the Spirit of God descends upon them, and this is the first recorded time that non-Jews have received the good news, the gospel of Yeshua, and believed and received it, and they were filled with the Spirit of God. To me, uh, the waters, both at Joppa and Caesarea and even behind us, represent the distribution of goods and of information, of communication, and certainly in those days even more than now. And so I see in this story about Peter uh, really a, a parable for our times, which is that God calls us to distribute, to bring uh, His love, the good news, the, the redemption uh, of man from, uh, from his own selfish nature. Uh, to a relationship with God. And uh, may we be like Peter, who became uh, a, an apostle with a message to his people. Shalom. <music>
That is such a familiar phrase to the Jewish ear, probably is to you too. Lishana haba'a be Yerushalayim for thousands of years that was said at Passover Seders mm -hmm. as we remembered the exodus from Egypt mm -hmm. and prayed and looked forward to the time when we could be in Jerusalem keeping the Passover. Well, it's like prophesying, you know, your next step in God, next yeah. year in Jerusalem, yes. telling yourself we will be there. Yeah, and then God changed everything, May 14th, 1948, by the rebirth of the state of Israel and fulfilling that prophecy so that now when people are actually keeping the Passover in Israel, they can say, we're here. Wow. God has done it. It's happening in our lives. And that's so important for us. It's yes. important for you as believers. Mm -hmm. Because if, if God keeps his covenant mm -hmm. with the Jewish people, he'll keep his covenant with the believers in Yeshua. Yeah, we're, we've seen over the course of even the study, the fulfillment that God has fulfilled. Um, you know, he's brought them back to their land. He's restored them to the place that, they, that God's for, ordained for them to dwell in and that he would bless the land when they're there. And now we're seeing him pour water on him yes. and restore, their, restore him to his salvation. Yes. But we are wanting ourselves and, and calling you to pray for the next phase that's coming. Yes. It's, in, it's in Isaiah 62, 1. It says, for Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. Amen. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest Amen. until his righteousness goes forth as burning and his salvation as a lamp. It's a powerful call. Yeah. It's a holy calling, and it's really the, 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 the primary calling of this program, of what we do with our ministry, right. is about waking people up to take their place on the wall as watchmen, just as Isaiah calls us to. You know, in Exodus 15, 17, when God looked forward with Moses to the place that he would build with him, it was called the mountain of God's inheritance. Yes. And the scripture says that at that time, yes. God will establish himself as a sanctuary in that mountain. Mm -hmm. Which mountain? Mount Zion, Mount Moriah, the center of the earth. And he says also, Adonai loch li olam va'ed. He will reign forever and ever from mm, that place. The city of our God. Hallelujah. <laughs> and that is why we like to end our program with Psalm 122, verse 6. Sha'alu shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter, along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS, or you can purchase it from our catalog at levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Please remember, Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program by Zola Levitt Ministries.